kind of problem. Now notice a couple things that happen. I have not labeled uh, the slow step. I want you to find the rate law, but you don't know which one to pick. Uh, in this case, uh, when the slow step's not labeled, the rate law that you're looking for is the one that looks like it produces the product. So if the product's NOBR, it's the second rate we're looking for. This is the one that produces the product we're looking for. Okay? So we're going to pick the second one as the rate we're going to solve for. So in this case, rate 2 will be our answer. And that's K2 time, uh, times the reactants, NOBR2 times NO. There's a problem with that, though. This NOBR2, you'll notice, doesn't appear in the overall reaction. That's an intermediate. I'll circle the intermediate right there. So I have an intermediate in my answer right here. Not OK. So if that wasn't there, I'd be done. But whenever the rate that you're solving for is not the first one, not the first reaction, it's going to happen that you'll have an intermediate. Um, so let's use uh, the pseudo steady state hypothesis. So PSSH tells us that the rate of appearance of an intermediate equals the rate of disappearance. Well, the rate of production equals the rate of reaction. So where's the rate of appearance or production? Where does the intermediate appear? In what reaction? The first one, rate one. OK, where does it disappear? Rate two. And where else does it disappear? Rate one reverse. If rate one goes backwards, that product, that intermediate disappears. See what I mean? It gets consumed if the reaction goes backwards. Is that cool with everybody? By disappear, do you mean that it's a reactant? Yes. So disappear means it's a reactant. Appear means it's a product. Hmm. Uh, and it turns out that this is a really common equation that PSSH gets you to. So you'll often see, it's not always, but often, rate 1 we equal rate 2 plus rate 1 prime. When the problems get more complicated, that won't be true, but it's a common sort of PSSH equation that comes up. So now we're going to use this equation. Uh, I don't know if you remember when we solved this using the case 2 sort of analogy, we said rate 1 equals rate 1 reverse. Do you remember that? We did that in class. And now you can see that's an assumption. Actually, rate 1 equals rate 2 plus rate 1 reverse. So this is uh, a better assumption than saying that rate 1 equals rate 1 reverse. Okay? It's a slightly better assumption. All right, now well, let's plug in stuff. Uh, let me do it down here kind of. Rate 1 equals K1 times NO times BR2. <coughs> that equals rate 2, which is K, K2, NOBR2 times NO, plus rate 1 reverse, K1 prime times NOBR2. OK, see what I did? I have rate 1 equals rate 2 plus rate 1 reverse. I just plugged in the rates accordingly. Okay. Now, what am I going to do with this mess? Solve for the intermediate, which is now here and here. So I'm going to get a somewhat complicated algebraic equation at this point. It will look like this. And but do you want me to show my steps? Uh, sometimes I kind of do it in my head. Would you like to see the steps or not? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so, first factor. <laughs> so, K1 
uh, NO VR2. Uh, I'm going to have to move this. I'm going to do it over here. I'm going to do it over here. Uh, K1, the left hand side, NO times BR2 equals, now factor out NOBR. Factor out the intermediate. This should always be able to happen somehow. So you factor it out and then you get uh, K2 times NO plus K1 prime. Okay, look at that and make sure you know where the heck I got that from. All you should see is that I factored out the NOBR2 from the right hand side. Now I'm going to divide by this thing in braces right here. Okay? So NOBR2 equals uh, there's everything here on the left hand side, K1, N, O, B, R, 2, divided by that whole mess in braces, K2 times N, O plus K1 prime. Okay, take a look at that and make sure you know where I got that from. You should see I just divided what's in braces. It looks ugly, but it's just algebra. Okay, so it's just seventh grade, but it's just uglier stuff instead of X, Y, and Z. Okay, I'm going to have to erase the top a little bit now. All right, now what am I going to do with this mess? Yeah, I'll just plug it in right here. So I'm going to rewrite rate 2 up top. Rate 2 equals K2. And I'm going to write that whole mess. I'll put it in braces again. K1 times NO times BR2 divided by K2 NO plus K1 prime. That's the whole thing in braces. And now times the remaining NO that was originally there. So now you should see I, all I did is stick the thing in braces in for the intermediate. Now let's just <coughs> simplify a little bit. So to simplify, R2 equals K1 times uh, K. 2 times NO squared times BR all over K2 NO plus K1 prime. If I did my algebra right, that's the answer. So it's a lot more ugly. It minimizes some assumptions, though. Okay. Did I miss something? Oh, this is BR2. Excellent.